Hi, and thanks for coming to check this out. So for this guide, we will go and have another look at animating paths with the write-on behavior. Uh, so it's kind of a follow-up to the write-on guide that I did earlier. Uh, and the reason for this is that from doing that last logo reproduction, number 10, it really reminded me of how useful using the write-on behavior is. Uh, and also, I've learned a few things about why the write-on behavior is a much better option when you want to publish templates in Final Cut. So let's have a look at just how to do these borders and how to get the variations going, and then we'll have a look at what it means um, when you want to publish for Final Cut Pro. Okay, so let's get started. I have this shape ready to work with. It's just a square 400 by 400. It's centered in the canvas. Uh, roundness is set to 30 and the width is five if you want to follow along. The project is 30 frames a second. So I've got the playhead here at one second, 15 frames, one and a half seconds. So I'm gonna add the write on behavior and trim the behavior to the playhead there. I want to use the custom speed curve here in the keyframe editor, so I'm going to make sure that speed is set to custom. And let's adjust the speed of the right on there. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is animate the stroke length from 100 to 0. So we'll come to the start Set a keyframe there on stroke length, come to the end of the write on behavior, set another keyframe for stroke length, and drop that down to zero. So we have this animation working now. And I'm going to grab the stroke length curve and make some changes there. So the relationship between this curve and this curve is going to determine how the animation looks. So if I make this uh, a lot faster out of the gate, like this, you can see the difference. So generally, I think controlling uh, the speed of this curve will influence uh, the length of the path that you can see. So that is uh, step one. So now we want to make the other path. So we can duplicate the path and flip it over on the rotation. Just for now, I'm going to use a clone. So let's clone it. And I'm going to turn the clone around 180 on the Y and 180 on the X. And that is the basic setup for animating the double borders that are running around like that. Uh, and this is what I use to do the borders for the logo reproduction number 10. So let's go and have a look at the different variations that we can get by uh, adjusting the stroke length and also the stroke offset. So we're back here uh, with these different uh, variations going on. Let's go through one by one and see what's happening. Uh, so first of all, I'll, I'll just turn all of these guys off for now. Uh, yeah, so up the top, you'll see I've got this group here labeled particle. Uh, yeah, maybe, yes, maybe no. Uh, this is something that I've been working on from an After Effects tutorial, actually, just trying to do what they're doing with trim paths in Motion 5. And it's not too bad with the write on behavior. I've been doing it with uh, just keyframing offsets. But with the write on behavior, it works out. Okay, you can see we're just doing exactly the same thing here. We have uh, custom speed working here. It's coming out really fast and then 
easing out. And then, oh, if I just turn on edit points, uh, you should be able to see the entire path there. Okay. Uh, and then I have the stroke length. Uh, coming from, it's starting at uh, all about 17% or so and decreasing to zero to get this kind of effect happening. All right, so back to the borders. Uh, right, stroke length to zero. This is in the style uh, that we just looked at. This is the basic build. Let's have a look. Right, stroke length to 5%. So with this one here, instead of the stroke length reaching zero, uh, the stroke length finishes at 5%, so we're left with these two bookends there. And so from here, let's have a look at uh, this one here, stroke length 5% offset shift. So it's the same animation. But in this one, you'll see also that the stroke offset is keyframed. So the offset is going to shift the start and end points of the paths uh, from this corner to this corner. If I just reset that for now. So if we play with the stroke offset, you can see this is this is the result. And when we look at publishing for Final Cut, this is a, a big deal. With this one, da, 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 da. Uh, okay, offset static. Okay, so with this one over here, you can see that uh, the the stroke length is five percent. I'm not animating with the stroke length here. Instead, I'm animating with just the stroke offset. So we get the bookends running around. With this one here, uh, animate the length between. Okay, so with this one, with the right on behavior here, you'll see that the stroke length is here it is here, is keyframe from 5 to, should be 25 and down to 5 again. So we are getting uh, more of a, a stretch out in length and then contracting back to the bookend size. And of course you can do that with uh, setting it back to zero as well. Uh, so what have we got down here? Uh, single path rather than the twin paths there, so no other group. This one is bookending and this one's animating out to zero for stroke length and a couple of circle shapes in there also. So I think you can see that by playing around with the stroke length, the stroke offset, uh, there are so many different things that you can do. So what we'll do now is we'll go and have a look at why using the ride-on behavior uh, has 
um, really big advantages when you want to publish templates for Final Cut. If you are into publishing for Final Cut, then nothing here will be new for you. But if you're just starting out in Motion, then hopefully this is useful information for you to have if you want to start publishing your own templates through to Final Cut. So we have a path here on the right, and it's animated by keyframing the first point and last point offset. And we have a path here on the left, which is animated with the right-on behavior like we saw before. So when we want to publish uh, shape parameters for the editor uh, in Final Cut, we've got two choices. We can publish width and height from geometry, or as an alternative, we can publish X and Y scale. So just to point out the difference, uh, for the shape on the right, I published the scale. And for the shape on the left, I published the width and height from geometry. So for the shape on the right, if I adjust, you can see right away that there's a lot of distortion that happens when we change the scale. If I come to the style section and the inspector, you can see this really useful feature here, preserve width. If I check that on, you see it gets rid of most of the distortion, but the corner is still noticeably flattened out, and that will just become more obvious if I adjust the height even more. But for the shape on the right, we have just the normal, the natural height and width published. So you won't get any of that distortion happening at all. So my first point is that the width and height parameters from geometry are the best parameters to publish through to Final Cut. So the reason that's related to the write-on behavior is that when we animate paths, we might want to change the starting point of the path animation. I'll just reset everything here. Okay, so with the write-on behavior, um, I can do that easily with the stroke offset, like we saw before. And using the stroke offset has no effect at all on the availability of these awesome parameters. But with the shape on the right, if I want to change the starting position, what I need to do is convert to points. So I've converted to points, and you'll see that now instead of geometric uh, height and width, what we have instead are the control points. Uh, so what I can do is I can choose any control point I want as my start point, or I can add my own and make that the starting point. And now the path animates from there. You will see that because of the roundness parameter here, it's offset a little. So if we pull that back. You can see that's the true starting point there now, which is great. Uh, and there's there are many reasons that you would want to have control points instead of uh, the geometry parameters available. but if you want to publish through border shapes to Final Cut, then I would recommend that you choose Write-On instead. Uh, because as we saw before, publishing the height and width gives you better results when you make changes to the area of the shape in Final Cut. But the other reason is that these height and width parameters, these are the best parameters to make relationships with text objects. So if we turn on this group down here, so I have just a little basic title uh, set up here, and if I grab the if I grab the text and I add uh, 
add more text, you see how those borders are adjusting. And if I add another line of text, then the borders have automatically adjusted. And that's a great feature to have uh, when you publish templates through to Final Cut. And this is available because of the Align to behavior, which was introduced in Motion 5.2, I think, and this size link here. So if we look at the link, you'll see that it's the shape geometric size is linked to the text geometric size. And with the combination of the Align to behavior, we get this auto-adjusting feature, which is really, really cool. But if I was to try and make the same relationship, if I was to link the X and Y scale of the shape to the title size, you just do not get the best results at all. You get that skewing and the scaling, and uh, it, it's not a great thing to do. So there you go. Um, we can use a right on behavior to animate borders and paths. And if you want to publish templates for Final Cut, then the right on behavior, if you want to be able to manipulate the start point of the path, then the right on behavior gives you the better options for publishing. OK, hey, thanks for checking it out. I hope it was useful. Thanks for watching.